In this new video series, I'm going to show you exactly what to do to evaluate the car like an automotive engineer, starting with the paint job. I'll show you exactly what to do, how to figure out whether the paint job is good or not so good, and the technique I use as an automotive engineer. So the very first step is a simple one. Find a bright room where you can clearly see the reflection of the paint and take a slow walk all the way around to see if the paint is uniform, consistent, and reflecting the light exactly the same way. What you want to do is move your eyes up and down the paint and take a look and see if the reflection is uniform from top to bottom and take a slow walk and see if you can detect any kind of paint defects. If there is a bright light, you should be able to see defects very clearly. Even though this car is a bit dirty right now, I can tell right away if there's any kind of paint defects because I'm putting my eye very close to the paint surface and walking very slowly. And in particular, you want to take a notice of the difference between the panels. For example, between the hood and the front quarter panel or between the hood and the plastic molding, uh, in this case, the front bumper section. Usually this is uh, where the paint can, uh, can differ in terms of reflection and the depth, and uh, that is one way to tell if the paint job was done properly. I also like to put my hand on the paint slowly and feel to see if it's smooth and uh, I don't feel any kind of bumps or any kind of inconsistency. Uh, also, of course, between the front uh, part of the car and the all the way through taking a look through the roof. Uh, this particular car has a roof that's a, a different color and so you want to take a look at that. And also like uh, this part here is a plastic piece there and sometimes the uh, gas cap as well may have a slightly different uh, discoloration. So really a consistent car with a great paint job, uh, it doesn't matter if you look at the bumper or the front quarter panel or the hood or the trunk, they will all look exactly same under the same light. Generally speaking, in a brand new car, you should not find that much paint defects, but you might see a slightly different reflection of the paint uh, against the light. And that is a really good indication whether or not paint was done properly or not. Now in a used car, this is absolutely critical step, because this is how you tell whether or not the car had an accident and the paint job was re repaired or redone. And uh, by looking carefully around the car and reflecting off the bright light in almost all cases you can tell if the car was repainted in some form or shape. The second part of the evaluation of a paint is more technical but also very important. Now this does require buying a special tool called a paint thickness gauge and with that tool we can actually measure the thickness of the paint on every single panel. And by measuring the thickness, you can tell for one, whether or not there was sufficient paint applied to the car. And secondly, if there was any repair done to the car by uh, looking at the thickness and the consistency of that thickness. So let me show you by measuring these um, thickness of the paint using the paint thickness gauge. And I'll show you exactly what the differences are from panel to panel. So let me show you how this works. Here's a paint thickness gauge. You can buy this from Amazon for about 50 to $100. And all I have to do is place this on top of the paint and it tells me in micron the thickness of the paint. So here we are on the hood is about 180, uh, 190. And let's measure one more spot here. Let's take a look. Uh, 175. So typically average thickness of the paint is between 100 to 200 uh, with most cars being about 150. So this car, the uh, Land Rover uh, Defender has about 170, 175 on average. So that's slightly thicker than average car. I'm going to continue to measure the side panels. Here's a 179 on the front door. Let's take a look at the rear door. Uh, it's also about the same. And the uh, rear quarter panel, uh, which is uh, also a very similar number here. So the paint is consistent. Now, if you see a difference in the actual numbers of more than 50 micron, uh, it's very suspicious. So you want uh, all of the panels to have very consistent thickness and same measurement. Now, this part is plastic, so it cannot read a plastic. Uh, this is a plastic panel here so we will continue to go around and measure and you want to make sure again that it is between 100 
and 200. Uh, you can see again this uh, defender is definitely a little bit thicker paint than average car most uh, domestic or japanese or european cars are about 150 uh, but this one is registering about 160 170 180 on average so uh, they must have uh, made sure that this particular car has a slightly thicker paint than normal and that's a good thing obviously um, now this does measure the thickness of all the different layers of paint that includes the um, what we call the e-coat the primer the base coat top, top coat and the clear coat all the layers added together comes out to about 170 micron um, so this is how we measure the paint and uh, i'm actually quite impressed so far with the measurement and you'll be shocked sometime on other cars the paint can be a lot thinner now let's try the same thing on the 2020 Toyota GR Supra and see what happens using the same gauge. So I'm going to measure the hood here first, 132. Let's try this section here. Uh, it's also uh, about 130. So as you can tell already, this paint thickness is slightly um, uh, shallower and thinner than the Defender. Uh, so it's averaging about 120 to 130 on this Supra. Now you might recall that uh, Supra is actually not built by Toyota, but it's built by a company called Magna in Austria. Um, but here the, the, the paint is a little bit thicker on the roof, it's about 140. Let's take a look at the driver's uh, door here. Uh, it's 125, so it's about the same as a hood. So it seems on average, it's about 125 to 130, which is, uh, which is still within an average number, um, but clearly a little bit thinner than the Defender. Now, we'll keep going around, so some sections are a bit thicker than others. As long as it's plus or minus 20 to 25 microns, it's pretty consistent. Now, uh, let's take a look here. Oh, 259, something's not right. Let's measure again. 200, it's over 200 still. So that is a bit odd. The passenger side door is a little bit thicker, while the rest of the paint is 120, 125. So that actually tells me that this car might have had a repair in the passenger side door so even though this Supra is supposed to be brand new and I purchased it brand new by using the paint thickness gauge I was able to reveal and figure out that the passenger side door was either repainted or there was another layer of paint added at the factory at the end of the day though paint thickness only tells one part of the story it's really important to take a look at the paint as a whole. So you want to make sure that paint is glossy, shiny, smooth, consistent all the way around, and the paint thickness is also very consistent. As I show you now with the paint thickness gauge, you want the paint thickness to be kind of between 120 to 175. If there's more than 25 micron variation from panel to panel, then it's possible that part of the paint was repainted or repaired either at the factory or by the shop. So the paint thickness gauge is really a way to tell you whether or not there was a repair done. And if you're buying a used car, the paint thickness gauge is particularly useful because if there is uh, one panel that's way thicker than the rest, you know for sure that panel was repaired and repainted. So this is uh, basically my uh, way of showing you how the automotive engineer evaluate the paint. I hope you learned a lot and uh, there's more to come. Thank you everyone. Peace out.